It has been 10 years since I started game development. Actually, it's over 10 years at this point since I, I started game development. I've made a ton of mistakes along the way. I actually made a video about those mistakes. You can find the link right here. But I also learned a ton and grew a lot in those 10 years. And those growth and learning opportunities led me to finding a little bit of success here on YouTube, releasing games, starting Twitch, building a Discord server. All of those things that I've learned led to that little bit of success that I found. And I want to Share just five of those things that I learned today so that maybe you too can find just a little bit of success. So let's get into it. First huge lesson is efficiency. Now this doesn't mean working faster or getting things done in record time. For me, efficiency is about failing faster. This might sound weird, but hear me out. Every failure is a step forward, obviously, kind of. The quicker you get to your failures, the quicker you learn what doesn't work and the faster you move towards finding what does work. I have learned that efficiency isn't about rushing through tasks, but creating rapid feedback loops, prototyping, testing, and scrapping things that don't work. The more you embrace that cycle, the better you'll get at making decisions that move the project forward. I'm going to talk about YouTube a bunch in this video, but YouTube is that feedback loop on overdrive. Whenever you post a new video, the feedback is immediate. You learn right away what does and what doesn't work. And that is a great muscle to have in game dev, not even for the final product, but for the process. Again, take a YouTube video as an example. It, it used to take me two weeks to make a video and those videos were garbage, but I learned and got faster at the editing process, which allowed me to spend more time on scripts and thumbnails, which overall made the videos better, which again led to growth. Finding tools to help you become more efficient like asset packs or whatever it might be will only help you learn faster about what works and what doesn't work. So that's number one. It has been a game changer for me, but let's keep moving. Next, let's talk about consistency. I've learned that showing up regularly is one of the most powerful things you can do. It's not always glamorous, but it leads to real and lasting progress if you're able to stick to it. When I say consistency, I mean sticking to a schedule, making steady progress, and most importantly, finishing what you started. The projects you actually complete teach you far more than the ones that are half baked or half done. Consistency is what transforms ideas into games or whatever you're working on. You don't need huge bursts of inspiration every day. You just need to show up and put in the work little by little. Over time, that's what leads to growth. And that's how you truly improve. I know for me, I would think that I would need to complete these huge tasks to get any real work done. But this would just lead to me burning out because the tasks were just too big. Only when I broke down the task into smaller, more manageable tasks, was I able to get anything done because I was able to be consistent with it. And again, YouTube, YouTube has assisted me so much in this by flexing that muscle. If you are consistent with your releases, consistent with trying new things, consistent with learning what works and also what doesn't work, you will have a great shot at finding success. And if you don't, if you do nothing, then nothing will happen. And that sucks. So try it. Break down the big tasks into smaller ones and then do it again. For me, at least when the task was smaller, when the bar was lower, I typically ended up getting more done anyway. So just go try it out. Let me know how it goes. Let's keep moving. This next one is a simple one to understand, but it's, it's absolutely crucial. Just try, just start, just take the first step forward. Take the step that is the hardest step. It's the first step. Take it. I can't tell you how many projects almost didn't happen because I was stuck in the planning phase, overthinking every tiny little detail. The truth is, if you never take the first step, you'll never go anywhere. You'll never know what's possible until you actually start doing the work. So stop waiting for the perfect moment or the perfect set of skills or the perfect idea. Just start something. You'll figure out the rest as you go. The best way to learn is by doing. And trust me, you'll learn a lot faster once you're in the thick of it. Again, I'm going to talk about YouTube because it's just the same muscles as game dev. I wanted to make a channel about games for years about game dev, but I didn't believe in myself. I didn't think I could do it or that I didn't know enough. And the fact is 
I didn't know anything. And that's the point. We have to start somewhere. You'll never learn if you don't take the steps to learn. And that's where I was for so long. I was afraid to take the first step and I didn't go anywhere. But once I took the first step, the second one was so much easier. And that is just a cascading momentum. Once you start the first step, second, third, fourth, it just keeps going. Just start, just go. And now here I am on with YouTube. Again, far from perfect, far from, you know, amazing success. I still have like a really far way to go, but I'm much further away from that hardest part, which is starting. So go for it. Start learning start learning what you need to know and take that first step. Take that first step that you've been apprehensive about. You will not regret it. In fact, you'd probably regret it in the future if you don't take that first step. So just go for it. I feel like Shia LaBeouf. Just do it. So just do it. Just do it though. Just go for it. Let's keep moving. The next one was kind of a tough one for me to learn because it's not so cut and dry, but it is invest in yourself. And I'm not talking about investing in your skills as a developer. It might mean that for you, but for me, it also meant investing in my well being and in my community around me. When I first started, I worked alone. I was laser focused on the technical side of things and I didn't really think that I needed anyone else, but that isolation held me back. It wasn't until I started opening up and connecting with other developers, sharing my journey on YouTube and building this community around me that things really kind of took off for me. You need a support system, both with for feedback and mental health. You need that. You need it. And investing in yourself, it isn't just about being a better developer. It's about creating a balance where you can actually enjoy the process. Don't go it alone, build relationships and take care of yourself along the way. Again, you won't regret it and it will absolutely help you when you get into the thick of things and you'll get into the thick of things. And again, on a more tangible note, investing in things that aren't directly connected to game development and that process have paid off for me in a dramatic way. For me, one of those things is my voice, my ability to communicate. I love, 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 love talking to other developers just to share stresses and the burdens of the process. And I have invested in that by reaching out to whenever I had the chance to talk to someone wiser than me and to learn and as well as, you know, use my voice to start a YouTube channel, to stream, to have a discord server so that I can communicate and use my voice for those people as well. If I hadn't invested in myself, in my voice, my ability to communicate, I wouldn't have the things that I have today. So what about yourself can you invest in? Is it your voice? Maybe it's your ability to teach. It might be worth asking yourself that question. Ask yourself, what, what can I invest in, in myself that's not directly related to game dev? You won't regret it. Let's keep moving to the last one. And finally, the most important one, ask questions, especially to yourself. I know it might sound like it would hinder you or, you know, that you think that the constant questioning of your choices would slow you down and bring everything you are doing to a screeching halt. It will do that if you allow it. But if you come to yourself with questions in a healthy way, it can lead to real growth and allow you to move forward in ways that you hadn't expected. There have been so many times where me not questioning my choices have led me to hitting walls, getting stuck and wasting so much time on wrong ideas. It's okay to question your beliefs, your designs, and even your motivation. You, you should to just to make sure that they're the right things to be doing. Obviously, again, you don't want to do this all the time, but it's good to question them every now and then. And it's through that questioning that you find better solutions and become more self-aware as a creator. In fact, those moments of doubt can push you to explore new possibilities and uncover solutions that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Maybe it's getting a team to help you where you lack. It was for me. Another great example of this was me using Photoshop. I know it's not a huge deal, but I had used Photoshop for years. I, I used it for game dev, for YouTube, and for everything else. And I'd used it since high school. So I was so fluent in it. I could be in, in Photoshop for like two seconds and just do what I wanted and it was fantastic. But years of using it meant I have sunk hundreds of dollars, maybe even thousands of dollars into Photoshop and and I was over it. I had tried, you know, GIMP, I tried Krita and I, I just couldn't find any, you know, good alternatives. But I didn't stop questioning it. I was like, what, there's, there's gotta be something else out there for me. And so I kept searching, I kept questioning and then I finally found Photopea, which is basically a free version of Photoshop. It's just web-based and you can go, you can go find it. It's fantastic if you want an alternative.
alternative to Photoshop. It's literally Photoshop but free. So now I get to save hundreds if not thousands of dollars because I chose to question that belief in me. So start asking yourself questions because it might save you thousands save me thousands so these are the five lessons i have learned as a game developer and as you know a game developer doing youtube efficiency taught me to embrace failure consistency kept me focused just starting moved me past perfectionism investing in myself reminded me to build connections and questioning helped myself grow i hope these lessons will help you today like they have helped me let me know what lessons you have learned in your own game development process what has led to your own growth and successes i can't wait to hear them below i can't wait to hear them below so let us know thank you guys for being here hit that like and subscribe button and leave a comment below we'll see you next time